involves an increase in the wage gap, increased militarization of police, increased surveillance, more censorship in the media, increased profits of radical hate groups. That, a dear not, real, unbiased, and unsugar-coated news. Moving on. We want to quickly remind our viewers that various countries have offered American citizens a new beginning, should they choose to leave the states after Trump's election. Officials in areas such as the struggling island of Inish Turk in Ireland, stated that they welcome American migrants with open arms. Ireland happens to be one of the relatively easier countries to obtain a citizenship in. They have nifty accents. Moving back a moment to Dr. Jill Stein, disappointed we all are in her investment. However that issue aside, you could deny she is probably one of the least corrupt politicians out there. Stein has in fact already begun to address some of the legal issues that have resulted during this election process. First and foremost, she has filed a complaint against Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump with the Federal Election Commission in Washington, D.C. for illegally coordinating with a handful of their super PACs. Various other lawsuits have been filed across the nation as well, addressing issues of direct corruption at the polls, such as African-American voters being purged from registration rolls. Now that the elections are over, it is time for those Americans who choose not to flee the states to push for changes within the voting system itself. We need to question the use of delegates and superdelegates, and we need to push big business out of the electoral process. Racial attacks have ignited across the U.S., and bigotry has begun to infect our youth. At the Southern Lehigh High School in Pennsylvania, it's been reported by the principal that white students have started calling their fellow black students, quote, cotton pickers, and are using the Heil Hitler salute. In Woodland Hills, California, a 16-year-old male student was attacked by another student who came up behind her and ripped her headscarf off. Royal Oak Middle School in Michigan, a video shows students chanting, quote, build a wall, and one teacher reported having to have a 10-year-old female student picked up and taken home after a boy grabbed her vagina. The boy apparently told school officials, quote, the president can do it, I can too, unquote. This information comes from democracy. In North Dakota, the Energy Transfer Partners announced late into election day, while everyone was preoccupied with the election, that they will defy Obama's requests drilled under the Missouri River, even though they still do not have a permit to do so. Pipeline safety expert hired by the Standing Rock Sioux has concluded that the Army Corps of Engineers' original environmental assessment of the Dakota Access Pipeline was seriously deficient. The specialist concluded the area near the river is prone to landslides that could cause potential leaks, and that the pipeline needed to be rerouted. If you think Trump's going to help the situation, think again. He has investments in the DAPL project, and his election has all but guaranteed the construction of the pipeline will move forward. The industry group, Western Energy Alliance, Hailed Trump's election, stating, quote, We look forward to working with President-elect Trump's administration to roll back many unlawful regulatory orders, unquote. In St. Louis, a photo was obtained by the KMOV news station showing an unidentified white police officer standing over the body of a deceased African-American man, while smiling and giving a thumbs up. The African-American man has been identified as 28-year-old Omar Rahman, who was found dead in a home in Pine Lawn on August 8th. KMOV released the photo to Rahman's mother, Kim Staden, who is now demanding answers from officials. 
Daddy's lawyer, Antonio Romanucci, has called the photo quote, hideous, and is demanding a full-scale investigation into the incident. Roman's death was ruled a drug overdose, however Staten claims she has heard little else from police since her son's death, and still does not know exactly what happened. In world news this week, it was announced by Canada's transportation minister, Mark Garneau, that oil tankers will be banned off the north coast of British Columbia. This announcement comes after the Canadian government received harsh criticism for their failed response to a spill in the same region. The decision could put an end to Enbridge's embattled Northern Gateway Pipeline, and many are arguing the ban should extend across the entire... I want to help you out, but it looks like you're short. Morgan's proposal to extend the Tar Sands Pipeline, the terminal for which would be in Vancouver. Last week we reported on the International Criminal Court, who is currently in the process of initiating a full investigation into potential war crimes and crimes against humanity committed by the U.S. government in Afghanistan. This week, reports have surfaced that the U.S. has been warned it may face prosecution for war crimes committed in Yemen as well, or their role in the Saudi Arabia-led coalition bombings that have targeted hospitals, schools, and civilian populations. Democratic Representative Ted Lieu of California sent a letter to Secretary of State John Kerry and Defense Secretary Ash Carter on Thursday, stating that the U.S. government's promises to take precautions does not exempt them from being complicit in war crimes they helped enable. Lou states, quote, that's an awful dangerous game to play, that we're going to violate the laws of war because no one is going to prosecute us, unquote. In anonymous news this week, this year's U.S. presidential election overshadowed the 2016 Million Mask March, and little has been covered on this year's protests. Of course, thousands gathered at Trafalgar Square in London, breaking the parameters of the march set by Metropolitan Police, and working their way to Buckingham Palace. As can be expected, citizens are becoming increasingly angry over Western establishment politics, and tensions <coughs> with protesters and police among calls to bring an end to the monarchy. Many London protesters were still angry from the violence ensued by police at last year's march, and these tensions were aggravated by the heavy riot police presence this year. The Metropolitan Police announced that they arrested 53 people during this year's London MMM, in retaliation, anonymous hackers defaced the Metropolitan Police website. Thousands of anons gathered in major cities throughout the U.S., including in Portland, Oregon, where six were arrested at the Million Mask March after protesters blocked Interstate 5. And on Wednesday, hundreds of protesters returned, blocking the interstate again after news of Donald Trump's election. Protests in Portland have continued since, and police have begun to shoot citizens with rubber bullets and pepper spray. In Washington, D.C., Hostile UNSA are in the AO. Let's show them who we are. Various government locations, including the J. Edgar Hoover FBI building, the White House where they play Black Sabbath, Hardcore Team Deathmatch. Mars Eternal. vicinity.
Enemy UAV in your vicinity. You are halfway there. Friendly drone support is active. Vulture on the field. Friendly Scarab active. Friendly Bombardment incoming. Bombard Scorchers ready for use. Ground team, Scar 2 3. We have visual on the position. Five seconds. Multiple satellites for missile fire. Stand by. Friendly warden providing close air support. UAV ready. Mission success is imminent. UAV inbound to your position. Enemy scarab active. Your team is utilizing Thor. Enemy UAV in your vicinity. Mission success. Running diagnostics. You could have given more. Your team is counting on you. You've attained enough resources for a new supply drop. Brand new mission package, OI.